Hi, my name is Mark Brosens. I'm a producer with The Agenda with Steve Pakin on TVO, and today I'm joined by Christopher Dummett. He is a professor of history at Trent University, and he also has a blog called Everyday History, which is well worth a visit. Thanks very much for joining me, Chris. Thanks for having me. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about something very seasonally appropriate. We're going to be talking about the history of barbecuing in Canada and what that says about our conceptions of masculinity. So even though the barbecue is you know, part of the Canadian summer experience, it's kind of a new kind of part of our summer you know, rituals. So how did the barbecue gain popularity in Canada? Yeah, it's, it's true. You often think of it, it's often talked about like it's, it's age old and it goes back to the caveman. Uh, but in fact, when I, what I found out is, in fact, really the origins are in the 1940s and, and 1950s. Uh, so it's just in the post-war years. Uh, as to why then, uh, that's a good question. My, 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 uh, my, 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 my idea so far is really that it's, uh, it comes about for three reasons, right? One is that uh, th that's, that's when we get weekends. Uh, you know, before that time, this, the, the, this wonderful invention, which uh, you know, many of us get to enjoy of having you know, two days off on the weekend, didn't really exist for most Canadian workers. And it's really in the 40s and 50s that... Um, largely as a result of a kind of re really uh, uh, the success of, of unions in, in, in the Great Wars uh, of the 20th century, that they finally workers finally got this much time off, um, so so they could actually do something like barbecue in the weekend. Uh, and then you get the rise of, of, of suburbia, uh, so you know still pretty exclusive, but increasingly more and more Canadians actually have a backyard uh, where they could could actually have a barbecue, and they're not going to burn too many things down. Uh, and then uh, you get in, probably connected to suburban, suburbia in the post-war years, you get the, the you know, in, in connection with the baby boom, with people having more children, the, the, the sense of family togetherness, that, uh, uh, you know, families are, you know, in this space, usually just as a nuclear family, and they're supposed to spend some time together, and they're looking for ways, and they're finding ways to, to do that, and the barbecue is one of them. In the house I grew up in, and I think this is true for most uh, Canadians, my f mother did most of the cooking indoors. She did most of the cooking in the kitchen. However, my dad did most of the cooking when it was outside uh, with the barbecue. When barbecuing is just starting to get popularity in Canada, did it seem obvious at first that this was going to be the gender division of labor? Uh, yeah, that, that was that was there right from the beginning. In fact, there's pretty similar ways of talking about it uh, uh, that we have uh, that we have now. Um, I mean, in some ways, it, it, it was kind of odd in the sense that, uh, uh, you know, especially in the 1950s, there were really clear ideas about what, what, what men should do and, and what women should do in the household, and, and cooking dinner was not one of the things that, that, that men were supposed to do. Um, but also, it was, it's interesting how it was, it was really made to be kind of different and odd, uh, so that o o almost as if that, you know, that, that men, were, men were supposed to feel okay that they could do this because this was, this was somehow different and, and, and kind of bizarre and strange. You talk about, in an article you wrote on this, that advertising was a big push in order to get men to go out and start barbecuing. And one of the devices that they used in a lot of those ads and a lot of that literature and cookbooks for barbecuing is uh, the use of humor and irony. Uh, can you expand on that and tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean... There were all kinds of. Uh, I mean, I, I, I recommend for, for anyone uh, who who can do so to go in and look at uh, 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 Canadian tire catalogs from the early 1960s and 1950s. They make for great, uh, although kind of bizarre, uh, uh, these things. They're very much so, so something that you'd see on Mad Men, uh, and there were all these. Uh, um, and a lot, of course, a lot of these things focused on, on, on men and barbecuing uh, and what they would do. And I, I remember one in particular where it had this, this picture of this, this, uh, this older man with kind of gray hair with a barbecue. And he had this kind of Marilyn Monroe type woman beside him, uh, quite, uh, quite uh, uh, attractive in cartoon form. And he's kind of handing her a huge steak, you know, and, uh, and, and these two younger uh, uh, guys are there and, and they, they have these tiny little wieners. Uh, and it's funny, it's very funny, but it's also an interesting way in which you find this in all the way people talk about barbecuing was that they found ways to say that what men were doing when they were barbecuing was, was really quite masculine. And so here it's, this is about meat and virility and this, this older guy may have gray hair, but, but he, he's cooking the steak and, uh, and, is, and, and, and has this beautiful woman beside him. Uh, and in all kinds of ways, uh, the people, the advertisers, but also journalists uh, and others, people who just talk about barbecuing, they found ways to, 
to, to say that, oh, barbecuing was, was, was different. It was different than other cooking. So humor was one of them. Uh, they also suggested that, you know, the way they talked about the, the implements, you know, they, they had, uh, 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 they talked about the barbecues being made by this tough, heavy gauge steel. And it's interesting because, you know, when you look in the catalogs for that period, they didn't talk that way about, uh, about stoves and ovens. They were also made of tough, heavy gauge steels because they had to endure high temperatures. And you see here a real attempt to say that, wow, when men do cooking over fire, it's dangerous and tough. And when, 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 when women are every day cooking over, over the stove, well, what's going on is that they've got this, this nice, sleek, modern design, and it's interesting, and it's nice and convenient for them. So there's a whole different way in which they talked about uh, barbecuing versus other kinds of cooking. So when a man in the post-World War II period was going out with the barbecuing tongs, what do you think he was trying to say about his masculinity? Well, I mean, in, in some ways, I don't think he was trying to say anything. I bet he was just barbecuing a steak or, uh, or, or whatever. Uh, um, but I, I, kinda, I suppose that I, I, at a deeper level, there, there was a real sense that uh, even as men were doing these kinds of things, like cooking a meal uh, o o over the barbecue, although you know, usually they didn't cook a meal, they just kind of cooked the meat and everything else uh, was done or, or, uh, for them uh, by, by their wives or, or, or the women who were there. There was a real sense that the, the, this, this, the masculinity wasn't going to change, right? That even as men were, you know, these, m most of these men are increasingly doing, you know, white collar work or, or, or kind of modern work, which isn't kind of tough and engaging, that, that, that they still have this kind of older ideas of masculinity, that things aren't changing uh, in, in any profound way. Uh, yeah, it's one of the stereotypes that we have of the father from the 1940s and the 1950s is this aloof figure who isn't really involved with helping with household chores. I, when looking at barbecuing, and based upon what you just said there, I, does that stereotype really hold up in terms of accuracy? What does barbecuing tell us about that stereotype? Uh, yeah, it does. I mean, it, well, it, it doesn't, it slightly does. I mean, it does in the sense that uh, uh, barbecuing was not meant to change what men did around the household. They weren't meant to, uh, uh, you know, share equally in, in, in taking care of children. They weren't meant to share equally in doing household chores. And, uh, and you know, this was, this was even even as, you know, more and more women were, were starting slowly to go back to work, especially in the, in the late 1950s. And, and that, that wasn't going to change at all. Uh, but what, what you do find in the 50s is that, um, you know, people like psychologists would talk about you know, their fathers needing to be slightly more involved in the house, right? That they needed to be slightly more involved. They would change an occasional diaper. Uh, uh, they should be around on weekends to take a kind of, you know, um, you know, give advice to children and kind of be there. And, and you know, you can even see in, in people like Dr. Spock, the kind of the big, you know, big parenting experts from the time, suggestions that, well, fathers aren't involved in kind of guiding their children, crazy things might happen, like their children might become sex perverts or, or, or God forbid, homosexuals, uh, which is what's a, a, a terrible thing, according to, the, uh, to, 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 to the, the, these experts at the time. So people are expecting fathers to do a little bit more, but not too much. And really, the barbecue perfectly fits that idea. They're slightly more involved, but, but this isn't challenging uh, the way in which household labor is done in any, in any kind of profound way. So obviously a lot has changed since the 40s and 50s in Canada in how we look at family and gender uh, and division of labor in the household. Uh, so when it comes to barbecuing, do you think we're still fairly close to the 1950s and how that actually goes forward and how a family does that, or has that radically changed uh, since the period you were looking at? Yeah, I mean, in many ways, we're very, very different uh, from the 1950s, uh, thankfully. And some might say, uh, just disappointingly, I don't know, depending on your perspective. Uh, uh, what's amazing is when, when, I, when I look at the contemporary, uh, you know, on the, bar, the barbecue shows on the TV and, and, and whatnot, it's, it's really identical. The, the, the way people, people talked about men and barbecuing is, is really identical. The only thing that's different is the barbecues are bigger, there's more gas, and there, there are more celebrities doing the barbecuing. Uh, and so in some ways, that... It's surprising, but it kind of should give us reason, you know, to kind of shake our heads a bit, you know, that um, we think of the, the barriers towards things like sexual equality as being like, you know, um, uh, 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 you know, bars on entry to get into law school and, 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 and medical school and, and these other kinds of things. But in a sense, what I think the, this shows is that uh, in a way, the way we talk about men in domestic labor hasn't changed that much. 
uh, d despite everything else that's changed. Uh, uh, and so even though all these other kinds of barriers have come down, at a really kind of basic, mundane level, uh, the way we talk about men doing household chores hasn't changed. And it's almost, I think, because it's so seemingly so small uh, that, it, 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 that we're really what, what we're talking about, even though it seems amusing and small, is actually a, a kind of profound way of thinking uh, and kind of very difficult to change way of thinking about kind of uh, men and women and, and household labor. Really interesting stuff. Keep it in mind the next time we light up the grill. Uh, thank you very much. That's Christopher Dummett. Uh, he's a professor at Trent University, and uh, hope to hear from you again soon.